Hi guys, praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm sorry that last video had troubles. I got the central airs turned down, up, or whatever way. The <laughs> refrigerator's off, the phone ringer's down, that's off, the computer's off. And so hopefully there won't be no disturbing things and all my lights work and stuff. Uh, I still have to deal with people who say that I'm cherry picking or I'm picking and choosing what I want to believe in the Bible. And what they don't realize, I believe what it's saying. What I'm picking and choosing is who is saying what. I am comparing the words of Jesus, comparing the words of the Old Testament, and who says it. And I'm, I, this, this, I'm realizing this story. There's a war going on in the New Testament. And if you would study it by subject and by person and follow what it is, you will see all this stuff. And uh, to me, chapter 16 and 17 was a little on the boring side. Oh, and also the Torah friends of mine and stuff, they want to say that the New Testament is all corrupted. See, so you got all these extreme things and you and I need to stand before the Father and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Everybody says the Holy Spirit's guiding us. We all want Him to. But like I said, when I feel like I have... I found a fault or something that I did wrong or said wrong, then I want to correct that. See, I want to believe what it says. The translations vary, the definition of the words vary, the context varies, everything has a certain variation. But there's a story playing out here that's gone on throughout all of life. And so we have to learn what's going on with that story thing. And so if you want to believe that all the New Testament is corrupted, a lot of people say they have proof and stuff that John isn't accurate. I've always felt, felt I hate using the word felt, more comfortable with John because it has more personal details than what the other uh, Gospels and stuff says. And so we're going to jump back right now to uh, Acts 17, verse 30 and 31. And... Uh, I'm just going to read this because a double-minded man wants it his way, but he also knows what the truth is. Okay? And remember, I talked to you in the last video, that was the important part of it, is what a counterfeit is. A counterfeit looks and acts and seems more valuable than the real thing, unless you know exactly what to look for. Then it's worthless. What it says is worthless. See? And I look at Paul's character. And what he's accomplishing and what he's doing. See, people, again, signs and wonders are not a proof text that you're doing what God wants you to do. Or that it's even the Holy Spirit's even involved. Acts 17, 30 and 31. The times of ignoring God or ignorance, God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him, Jesus, from the dead. See, there's key points. He knows judgment day is coming. But we can be blind and we can be hardened in our hearts. Okay, let's go on to uh, chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. I hope I'm not talking too loud here. I feel like I am. I just got back from a softball game or baseball game for my grandson. And so, uh, and here comes the air conditioning. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila and a native of Pontius, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. I thought he's going to the Gentiles. I thought he claims in his other letters he's called to the Gentiles. He said here a while back, see, follow the play, follow what's going on, the events. He said he's done with the Jews, but this chapter is going to prove it different. Verse 5. <clears throat> when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Macadamia, yeah, <laughs> Macaronia, 
Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus Christ was, that, that the Christ was Jesus. And when the, they opposed him and reviled him, he shook off his, oh, this is where I was jumping ahead, I'm sorry. Jumping ahead, <laughs> he shook off his garments and said to them, your blood is on your own heads, I am now am innocent, now I am going to go to the Gentiles. And so I should have went over my notes before I started sharing this again to get back my in line and stuff. And so, okay, verse 8, we're going to drop down. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Be not afraid, but go and speak, and do not be silent. Again, I question these visions. I question the dreams. Okay? Regardless if you agree with it or not, that's kind of up to you. 12 and 13. And when Gallio was pro council of Archaea, the Jews made a united, a united attack on Paul and brought him to the tribunal. I'm not going to read the whole entire thing. Because, oh, yeah, verse 13. Saying, this man is persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. See, when I was always taught that Paul was the best of the best and the rest of the disciples and apostles were stupid, that I thought they were making up lies. But now there's, Luke is recording documented information that he was told. Verse 14, but when Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said to the Jews, you know, this matter has nothing to do with him and I don't want to mess with it. And so forth. So they go on. Okay, from 18, verse 24 through 28, we're dropping down. He goes through and he lists the different places that he has. Okay, this is about Apollos. I always liked Apollos because I, I wanted to be like him, boldly doing this. I don't want to have to follow a pastor. I don't want to have to, to be part of their church backing me up. This guy was like a lone ranger out doing it. But watch and listen to the events and what happens. This guy's character is what's incredible. Verse 24. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus and was an eloquent, competent eloquent man and a competent in the scriptures he had been instructed in the way of the Lord that's very key people that's very very key and being fervent in spirit he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus that is an incredible statement I wish people could say that about me though he knew only the baptism of John the guy got into his studies. He was smart. And he was committed. Verse 25, he began to speak boldly in the synagogues, when, but when Priscilla and Aquila, I always thought they were two women, <laughs> way back for years I did, heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately, according to their Pauline doctrine. 27, and when he wished to cross to the other place, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. Again, more Paul Indians people, the disciples of Paul. And remember, this guy only knew about baptism, so he really had nothing to reference it to when it comes to what Paul's saying. Because Paul's an eloquent speaker too. He's smart. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed. So that's the doctrine they're teaching. See, if you, I believe what this says, folks. Jesus never taught save through grace, to believe through grace. The Old Testament, the New Testament wasn't even around while this event was taking place. It was the Old Testament, it was the scriptures. Show me in the, no, the Old Testament where saved by grace is shown. It's not. For he, if, let's say believe, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public showing by the scriptures that Christ was Jesus. Okay, that is still, see, you mix a legitimate thing, a truth, with a seed that's a lie, and you get people to do that and take that. Verse 19, 1. 
This is important. And it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the island country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. They must have been Paulinians or Christians and not followers of the way of Christ. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what were you baptized? And they said, under John's baptism, verse 4. And Paul said, John baptized for the rep baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in one who is coming after him, that is Jesus. Where are we at here? Four, five, six. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and began speaking in tongues and prophecy. There were about 12 men in all. Okay, so we're not talking about a huge bunch. When I was down in El Salvador doing short-term mission, handing things out, when we went through Mexico, there were several places that people spoke in tongues and they were thieves. There were several people who knew all about the religious stuff and could do signs and wonders and scare you to death almost, but they weren't of the Holy Spirit of God. And he entered the synagogue for three months. He boldly, this is Paul, entered the synagogue reasoning and persuading the people about the kingdom of God. See, that's when I started to say he came back, he's back with the Jews again. See, he said he's going to go to the Gentiles, but he's back in the synagogue. Four, six, back teaching, eight, verse 10. Went through, okay. And uh, let's see, we subcontract that. He withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. See, now he's out of the synagogues and he's in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. See, so Paul went ahead of these guys to Ephesus. Where did I say Ephesus? Yeah, he came to Ephesus. On verse 1 and now he's doing it for two he held he was at Ephesus for two years in this hall or someplace preaching and teaching and stuff now that brings up an interesting point to me here now so I want to say okay he was speaking there 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 here's a key historical fact 2nd Timothy 1 15 Paul writes to Timothy you are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me. All who are in Asia. Where is Ephesus? It's in the country or whatever it is of Asia. Okay, continent of Asia or something. I don't know my geography very well. And Revelations 2.2. Ephesus church in Asia. The Holy Spirit, Jesus was talking through his uh, the, the angel of the Lord but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and have found them to be false. See, when you study topic, as soon as I heard he had, as soon as I read that he had spent two years in Asia, which is where Ephesus is at, that clicked. So I started looking up Ephesus and started looking up Asia doing word searches and all of a sudden it's like I knew I had seen this someplace as far as I'm concerned if you link these clues and look at them they're not out of context I've already checked that that's the first thing I look for that's the first thing Paul and in people Paul followers like to attack our character and that's what they do they don't sit down and rehash out the verse and go through the verse they attack our carrier and shut down they try to make us look bad that's what Paul always did is make people look bad Okay, 19, 11 through 14. And God was doing exceedingly miracle, extraordinary miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched his skin were carried out to the sick, and diseases and evil spirits came out of them. 14. Then some of the, the Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke a name of Jesus over those who the evil spirits, I adjure you by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, and the seven sons of the Jewish high priests. But the evil spirit answered them, 
Jesus I know and Paul I recognize, but who are you? The man in whom the evil spirits was leaped on them and whooped their butt. It doesn't say whooped their butt, that's in the Greek translation. And so, but the whole thing is we presuppose, there's that word, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. All this sounds like, oh, handkerchiefs and uh, what's the word I'm trying to find? Catholics and stuff. Oh, you go and pray this or you have this thing or you put this in your yard and you bring good luck and you do all this stuff. It's the hocus pocus stuff. It's the hocus pocus stuff. You see Jesus doing any of this stuff? He healed people. He did stuff. But he didn't get here, spit on my hanky and go hand it to somebody or whatever. I know I'm being sarcastic on that part of it. 17. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and a fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was exalted. What kind of fear? See, we are to have a fear of the Father. I fear for my life. I also have a huge respect for Him. So the fear has multiple different applications. And so, but to have a fear... This is what some churches and pastors and priests put into people. They get people to fear something. And so that is not good. Verse 20. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. What word of the Lord? The words that Jesus spoke or the words that the bright light told Paul to speak? I've also said that. I've got another video that says that you can clearly see there are two different Gospels. Lots and lots of verses. But because people say, oh, this is God's word. You don't believe God's word. If you believe that this is God's word, you'd understand that these guys are telling the truth. And if you'd put it all together, the clues and stuff, you'd realize that there's a battle going on. We haven't heard anything about the true apostles anymore. Luke is out there roaming around with Paul and we're picking up stuff. We're get, listening to him and everything. Some people who are very weak, and that's why I think Barnabas was. Barnabas was a good man. But he is a follower and he idolizes people. He lifts them up and puts them in glass cathedrals and churches. And we believe we buy their Bibles, we buy their pamphlets, we buy their books. See? 26. We're just about there. I'm hitting the high points on some of this. 26. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia... This Paul has persuaded and turned away great many people, saying that God made, oh, the God's made with man. This is back when they were having idols. So Paul did a good thing. He tried to, he whooped on the idols and showed them that that wasn't a true thing. So he turned a lot of people away from idols, but he would turn them to a false gospel. Say there's a huge difference there. 27, I already did that. Oh, 39, it talks about that there's a big riot and stuff like that. All who in Asia and the world worship. She, oh, they worship that particular goddess person. And so, ooh, turn the page over, Marty. Okay, and then they talk about a lot of that different things. And men of Ephesus, he's doing his little speech thing. And so uh, I'm going to stop here before we get into number 20. And uh, for we are really danger of being charged with yeah the priests are always worried about the romans in the background see see that's sometimes you got to distinguish when paul was persecuted or somebody was coming down on him or the jews you got the jews but you also got the romans and sometimes the jews would come down on him because they don't get whipped on by the romans see so again it's important to see the different words and understand that the words don't always have the same meanings by the same people so father thank you for your word man i just love this uh I pray that you'll help other people, guide them, direct them, help them to study for themselves, help them to walk in your ways, in your light, and in your wisdom, and not in man's, mine, or anybody else. In Jesus' name, amen.